The Lord said, I'm about to pour out a greater measure of myself. The Spirit of the Lord represents a measure of Himself. And guess what? Each and every one of us, we have the ability to carry as much of God's presence as we choose to. It's a choice. You get to choose how much of God's presence you house inside of your vessel. Remember, your body is a temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit. So I get to choose how much of God's presence I want inside of my temple. You get to choose. Your sons and daughters get to choose. Brothers and sisters get to choose. Aunties and uncles get to choose. We all have free choice in this life. I can pray for you, but you have to open up and allow the Spirit to move in you for yourselves. So this is what the Lord is saying uh, to the church. The Lord said to me, in this season of revival, renewal, and restoration, I'm about to pour out a greater dimension of my spirit. Whosoever will come, let them come. Freely I have received, and freely it will be poured out. Write this down. Whenever the Lord desires to bring citywide revival, nationwide revival, or global revival, he must pour out a greater measure of his spirit. But it is all dependent on one thing. I'm going to tell you what that one thing is. What is the one thing that determines how much of God's spirit is poured out in a revival? That one thing is determined by the hunger of the people. I can pray from now until next month, end of year, next year. But if the people that come are not hungry, it will only be me alone receiving the outpouring. Citywide revival is determined by a people that are hungry for God. Are you hungry for God this evening? Are you hungry for a greater measure of the Spirit? This evening my topic is the Spirit of the Lord being poured out. And I just have a feeling that I'm talking to someone under the sound of my voice that needs a refreshing, that needs a renewal, that needs this revival in their soul, that But do you know what? It is only the hungry that are receiving it. For if you are already full, then there is no room in your temple to house the new thing that the Lord is doing. So as I was praying, praise God, I'm seeing the church is responding. I am hungry, I am hungry. Christine says, yes, you are talking to me. Minister Joy says, yes, I'm hungry for a greater measure. Praise the Lord. I've got a church that is responding to this word. As I was praying, this is what the Lord said. If you desire to see revival in your church, then the people amongst your congregation must be hungry for it. Otherwise, the revival cannot come. They will block the outpouring of the spirits. Because they will just come and leave. Without actively participating and calling upon heaven and crying out to God to send revival. And so 
citywide revival is coming. Nationwide revival is coming. Revival is coming to churches that are hungry and that are looking for God and crying out to God. Revival is coming to entire families, but it's only those that are hungry and thirsting after righteousness will feel the rush of the Spirit in this season. There are some people, they say, well, I, I didn't feel anything. The pastor didn't pray hard enough. It's not about the pastor's prayer. It's about your prayer. It's about you tapping in. It's about you actively leaving the flesh man on the outside and advancing into the courts of God in the spirit. The Bible says, He, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Yes. And so the season has gone for performances. The season is gone for specials. It's people just coming to give a special in the house of the Lord. The season is gone for performances. We have entered into one of the most critical seasons of our life. It's either we say God and mean God or just back off. But I'm telling you what. Angels are moving from nation to nation, sealing the people of God. And the demonic powers, the fallen angels from hell, nation to nation, sealing the sons of disobedience, the ones that are in disobedience. Two kinds of sealing is happening right now around the world. Two kinds of harvesting is happening right now around the world. Every home is being measured with the measuring rod of God. Every family is being measured with the measuring rod of God. Do I have a church in the house that will understand the word of the Lord this evening? Every person is being measured according to the obedience of their heart or according to the disobedience of their heart. Every person, every person, every person on the face of the earth is being measured with the measuring run of God. I'm talking about the spirit of the Lord being poured out. I've got the word of the Lord coming to you right now. The revival that we are looking for, it is here. The revival that we have been praying for, it is here. The revival that you have been fasting for, it is here. It is here right now. Can you feel it? Can you feel the wind?
right now. Right here, right now. Do I have a church in the house? The Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, when the Spirit of the Lord is poured out, there is deep, heartfelt, sincere repentance. There is repentance for wrong ways. There is repentance for wrong doings. There is repentance for rebellion, direct rebellion in our hearts. There is repentance. When the Spirit of the Lord is poured out, Lord is saying, 
month of favor and celebrations. And then we're going to go to the pool. So stay with us to the end. Your life will be tremendously blessed. The Spirit of the Lord. Let's talk about the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Will somebody shout amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is a powerful dimension of God. Write that down. When the Spirit of the Lord comes, families and nations are saved and they get the victory because of the Spirit of the Lord. Write that down. The Spirit of the Lord is a powerful dimension of God. When the Spirit of the Lord comes, families and nations get saved and they get the victory. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord. Let me give you a portion of scripture. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 and two. Let's just take verse one and two. Minister Parisio will get that up on the screen while I try to read it for us. Isaiah chapter 11 verse one and two. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And it shall make him of quick understanding. So here we have the seven spirits that came and rested upon Yeshua. And the very first one is the Spirit of the Lord. And I'm giving you a little teaching now on the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is a powerful dimension of God. When the Spirit of the Lord comes, families and nations get the victory. When the Spirit of the Lord is absent, other spirits are present. I want you to write that down because that's a powerful point to remember. When the Spirit of the Lord is absent, another spirit is present. Whenever you find someone operating outside of the will of God, outside of His precepts, His ordinances, His commandments, living in direct rebellion against God. You can tell that that is not the Spirit of God. Right. That it automatically tells you that there is, there is another Spirit ruling this one. Right. There is another Spirit controlling this one. You can always tell spiritual people on, on church tonight, on church online, you can tell when someone is operating Contrary to the will of God. Saying one thing and then doing the total opposite. Contrary spirits are operating. That's not the spirit of the Lord. You know when the spirit of the Lord is working. And you know when a contrary spirit is working. Two totally opposite spirits. Opposite to each other. In direct rebellion against each other. This is where everyone now has to examine our own selves. I open church today by telling you there is a measuring line, measuring the hearts of people. Do you know why the Lord showed me that He's measuring the hearts of people? Because what, what I've come to understand is that people can put on a lot of faces and a lot of different kinds of personalities to fool people. But God is the judge of the hearts of men and women. And so, God is the one that judges motives, intentions, and behaviors, and lifestyles. What we cannot see behind a closed door, or in a dark room, or over a WhatsApp conversation, or over a private Facebook conversation, 
conversation, the Spirit of the Lord can see. And so, whenever a person begins to go contrary to the, to the convictions of the Holy Spirit, to the voice of God, we know that that person is not too very far off from being led by a contrary spirit. There are several ways that the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of the Lord convicts the hearts of men and women. I want you to write this down. Because I don't want you to forget that the Holy Spirit is there to help us, to guide us, to help us to live a right life. But we have to be willing to accept the help. Several ways that the Holy Spirit helps us. Number one, He convicts your heart of sin. Conviction. Write that down. Conviction is a good thing. I want to be convicted by the Holy Spirit if I am going to make a wrong decision. You better want that conviction. You need that conviction to keep you on the straight and narrow path. This is what happens. Whenever the Lord sees a child of God about to go a wrong way or walk a wrong path, or come off of the straight path to walk on the narrow path. Or they, or they are this close to sinning, right? Getting into the works of the flesh. The Holy Spirit is so soft. He will come and knock on their heart. Don't do that. He will come and knock on your heart. Susie, don't go there. Susie, don't take that call. He will say, Susie, don't respond to that message. He will come. Susie, don't take that call so late at night. Don't watch that pornography. Don't go back to that ex lover. Don't entertain those promiscuous thoughts. The Holy Spirit is such a gentleman. He will begin knocking. Three ways. I'll give you three ways that the Spirit of the Lord 
us. Number one, convictions. Personal, intimate convictions in your heart. The knocking. That's it. Very softly between you and him. Nobody else has to know. We got, if we ignore that, he sends us people, he sends pastors, ministers, your leaders, your praying parents, or elders, or your counselors, he sends them. If we ignore that, he begins to send messages, messages that directly relate to your case will come up on your screen. And you will know the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. Sometimes you will turn around and you will be like, whoa, this is directly for me. This message was for me. Now this is what happens when we ignore the counsel. Those three warnings, right? Those three ways that the Spirit of the Lord speaks to us. When we ignore those three ways, this is what happens. Do you want to know what the fourth thing is? This is the fourth thing. The Spirit of the Lord says, okay, they have ignored my gentle knocking on their heart. They have ignored my counsel from the pastor, the teacher, the word of God being spoken. They have ignored all the signs. I'm sending signs everywhere. They're ignoring it. I'm going to withdraw my spirit completely and leave them up to a reprobate man. Uh, is that biblical? Yes. People of God, notice the spirit of the Lord is withdrawn from the man or the woman that chooses to totally ignore totally ignore the counsel and the wooing of the Holy Spirit and so the Bible says that the Lord withdraws his spirit and he leaves such a person up to a reprobate man meaning he leaves you to do whatever you want to do whatever you want to do do it because the spirit of the Lord is, is now withdrawn from you because we have grieved the Holy Spirit. We, we don't want to listen to the knocking. We ignore the knocking. We ignore the counsel of the pastors. We ignore our counselors. We ignore our praying parents. We ignore every form of advice. Every sign that the Lord could have sent you, we ignore it. The Spirit of the Lord say, okay, time to withdraw. Pack up and leave that vessel. Leave them up to a reprobate mind. Let And so the Spirit of the Lord is so powerful. The Spirit of the Lord is not to be played with. We should grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is such a soft gentleman. The Holy Spirit has feelings. Did you know that the Holy Spirit has feelings and emotions? I know you thought you had all the feelings and the emotions, right? But the Holy Spirit has feelings and emotions. That's why the Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So, so now you know you can grieve and hurt the Holy Spirit. Alright? So let's move on. When the Spirit of the Lord is absent, other spirits are present. And these other spirits are the spirits that bring you into curses, bring you into bondage, bring you into sexual slavery, brings you pain, and it brings you poverty, it brings you shame, it brings you calamity, it brings you hurt, it brings you destruction. These other spirits come to try to ensnare the child of God when these other spirits are present. But glory be to God, the water in the pool is troubled today. And I can guarantee you by the anointing that is flowing out of this altar, the breakfast anointing is here to break up every soreness, to break up every spirit of accusation, every spirit of poverty, every spirit of shame, oppression, pain, sexual bondage, sexual slavery, secret life. Because revival is come, revival is here, and revival is now. And the more room we make for the 
outpouring of the Spirit is the greater measure of revival that we receive. The greater room that we make is the more greater that outpouring comes. So write down these points very quickly. I'm coming down into um, baptism. We're going to the troubling of the water shortly. Write this down. The Spirit of the Lord gives a child of God supernatural abilities to win victories. That's what's going to happen to you from this very day. You are about to receive a greater outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord. I know what I'm telling you. I've been in the face of God. I've been praying for revival. I've been fasting for revival. I've been seeking the face of God. And the Lord said, I'm about to pray.
Quanto às minhas amigas em que eu estava, eu não tinha nada de mais sério, só por não aguentar a dor na a morte por relação a esse tema do que eu estava a fazer. Não, um, there are younger people, people who are slightly older than me that looks up to me, you know, and I want to be that example for others, you know. When I see what's going on in the world today, you see that a lot of young people are on the wrong path. And you know, you don't really see much of them with really praise in the Lord and you know, but you see very few of them. And yes. you know, if I could be that example for others, you know, to lead them to the kingdom of God and bring souls in the kingdom, you know, that's so good. Yes. You know, to help them find their salvation, help them to realize their identity in Christ, you know, mm -hmm. and help them to realize that, you know, they are a child of God and they have a place in here and who loves them a lot, you know. Some people suffer with depression and like, suicide and all these things, and, you know, it's very hard to talk about it. And, you know, once you realize that place in the kingdom that God wants to be, you know, once you realize that love, You know, it would be so good to see a lot more young people come in. And if I could be that example and set that example for others, it would be so good. And I just want to thank God for being here. Um, it wasn't a forced decision. I'm not scared of anything. And you know, my mother, she did not force me to do anything. You know, she said, when you're ready to do it, you can do it. And you know, I feel like I'm ready right now. Um, I just want to thank God for being here and thank you for all the prayers and all the encouragement. You know, I just want to thank you for the people that God has placed in my life. I want to thank you for just everything that He has done. I want to thank you for being here today. Thank you. Amen. 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 How old are you, Destiny? I'm 16 years. Destiny is 16 years old. So let's pass over the mic. All right. And we're going to pronounce the blessings on your lap. So, Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, our Lord, I baptize you and immerse you into water baptism. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, but um, I've lived 
and now I am left to see the bird, to see the bird, to see the blossom, to see the fruits. Yes. And I know um, Apostle's word was so timely because exactly those statements, those four steps that you spoke about, when yes. the Holy Spirit tries to guide you and lead you and carry you down a certain path, I am a testimony. Yeah. That, that is so true. Unfortunately, I got taken down that road of the wrong path and yes. yes. try to do it on your own and try to think it up. Yes. They were man and with them. Yes. They were yes. 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 And yes. the devil out there, he does, he is, he does the cure. Yes. When you take the Holy Spirit for granted, because I always have the anointed and prayers of mothers and aunts and the children. Yes. yes. And when you take the anointed for granted, when you bring that spirit and he leaves, yes. you feel it, it yes. rocks your yes. world. Yes. And it isn't that easy, not everybody that goes off the beaten path comes back. Yes. I just want to admonish anybody out there yes. that think that they could play for a while. The ones that feel like gambling yes. and they have the time to gamble. Yes. That you know that you're playing with a consumer and fire. Yes. Right? Yes. And he is the Lord of God. He sees and he knows yes. your heart. Yes. Right? And you know, if God is, if God leaves your life, it's the scariest place to be. Yes. Right? Yes. So I thank God for the things he brought me through, through healing, through multiple deaths in my family and his kids as well. Yes. You know, I, I thank God because um, even in my own struggles, you know, the Lord has seen me through some hard, hard, difficult places. Yes. And to get back to this point, it isn't easy. It's prayer, it's consecration, it's fasting, it's giving it up, it's yes. letting go. And it takes a while to come back to this point. It, it isn't that straightforward of a thing because now you have to start over. Yes. You know? But God is able to give it strength. He never lets you know for Never. You know, it is never too late to start over. I mean, as, as a person said, we're looking forward and we're walking forward into the new blessings and we don't want no weights and we don't want nothing to hold us back when we're going forward. So I just thank Jesus. I thank him for the blood. I thank Father for yes. sending his son and I thank the comfort and I told the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Powerful testimonies from young women, young women that could be your daughters, young women that could be your sisters, young women, powerful testimonies. There is mercy at this baptism pool today. There is grace at this baptism pool today. And as Ruan gets ready to go down into the waters, I just want to create a of a personal decision and a public identification with our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. By joining in water baptism, you are now identifying with Christ and entering into the family of God worldwide. You are now going to go down into the water as an old woman, or as an old man, they say, and rise up out of the water as a new creation. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, I now baptize you and immerse you into baptismal waters in Jesus' name.
Oh, 